How clear is the line between life and death? Everyone here has something in common, a beating heart which keeps us alive. If your heart stopped beating, that would be cardiac arrest, leading to death. But what if you didn't need a beating heart to be alive? To answer this question, we must go on a journey, all the way to the forests of northern Canada. Now, this isn't a story of fantasy or a fairy tale. It does, however, involve a frog, the wood frog. And each winter, the wood frog blurs the line between life and death. Unlike us, frogs are cold-blooded. Their body temperature closely follows the temperature of their environment. Now, seeing as the wood frog lives in such a cold environment, this presents a problem. But the wood frog has evolved a solution to live with the cold. Like Bear Grylls, the wood frog is tough. But unlike Bear Grylls, it's tough in real life. <laughs> as the temperature drops below zero, the frog begins to freeze. First its legs freeze, then its head and chest, until finally its heart freezes. No heartbeat, no pulse. It's in cardiac arrest. And it stays in this death-like state for weeks. Now, during these weeks, the frogs are just like ice cubes. If you drop them on the ground, they clink around. In fact, they're so cold, they don't even respond to a kiss from a princess. <laughs> But during the spring, something incredible happens. The frog begins to thaw out. Its heart starts to beat again, its lungs start to breathe again, until finally they're hopping around. But how can the wood frog cheat death like this? And why can't we survive freezing and thawing? Well, when the cells in our body freeze, they dehydrate. Water leaves the cell and freezes in the area around the cell. But with no water left on the inside anymore, the cells collapse, split and die. But the wood frog is different. It has an inbuilt safety mechanism. As its cells begin to freeze, some water leaves, but it is replaced with glucose, which is a simple sugar that the frog makes as it freezes. This glucose combines with the remaining water inside the cell, keeping the inside unfrozen. So while all around the cell is frozen, the inside is protected in its natural sugary antifreeze. So clearly the wood frog won't be giving up sugar for Lent. Then, when the frog thaws out, water re-enters the cell, the glucose leaves, and the cells resume their function. And this freeze-thaw adaptation allows the wood frog to survive, not by avoiding the cold, but by embracing it. And it challenges our understanding of what it means to be alive, a beating heart. And that is how the wood frog is blurring the line between life and death. Not by freezing to death, but freezing to live. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I really enjoy your talk. I mean, you're so fascinated by frogs. I also <laughs> became fascinated. Uh, so frogs are really interesting uh, organism for uh, researchers. I recently heard that some, some uh, chemicals are isolated to be maybe potential antibiotics and so on. So my question is, you, your research is about frogs in general or, or something else? No, my research in general is in the field of environmental science. So my own research in particular is on, is on using willow trees for waste treatment, but I also like understanding what we can learn from our environment. So that's why I decided to talk about the wood frog and how we can learn um, from the wood frog about its life cycle and how it challenges what we assume to be the norm. And by your opinion, I'm sorry, by your opinion, how far are we from freezing and defreezing uh, people? Uh, we are, it's not impossible, but we are far away from it. Um, <laughs> I think the most important thing to realize is that the wood frog has evolved to freeze multiple organs at the same time. We haven't. But if we can understand how the wood frog is able to freeze multiple organs at the same time, then perhaps we could apply that knowledge to, let's say, increasing the amount of time that we can store organs for. Because currently we can only store organs for maybe six, six hours, 12 hours. If we can understand how the wood frog 
does this for weeks, then maybe we can increase the length of time we can store an organ from 6 to 12 to 24 hours. That means you can get an organ from anywhere in the world to where it's needed. Big hand for the big freeze of Fergus McCullough.